Uh, let me, it's 302, so let's get started. Um, welcome everyone to this, uh, to this webinar on sales and marketing and the discussions between them. This webinar is going to be run by Mads Winter, who's a, who's a personal mentor and a friend uh, who, uh, you know, I've learned a lot from when it comes to marketing and sales. So I'm really looking forward to the session. Uh, my name is Varun Malik. I'm the CEO of a consulting firm called Consolidon. Uh, Consolidon has a very different model for a consulting firm, uh, different from traditional consulting firms, in that when you go to a traditional consulting firm, a partner or a director will understand your requirement, and then uh, the work is delivered by consultants who are employees of your organization. Our model is a little bit different in that whenever we get an opportunity, we go to one of our consulting firm partners, so we, part, we collaborate with about 350 boutique consulting firms. So there's a, a senior expert, someone who's a subject matter expert or an industry expert who's coming in to deliver the project. Um, so this webinar has been, uh, or this web summit, uh, it's a series of webinars and panel discussions has been uh, organized by us and about 70 other boutique consulting firms working together. Um, it's called Connected Insights and it runs for seven days, uh, starting today till the 29th. And I can quickly show you uh, if you've looked at it uh, already, uh, you know, you will be able to see all, all the sessions here. Uh, we've had a few very interesting sessions in the morning today and really looking forward to this session between, uh, you know, creating coherence between sales and marketing. Um, during the discussion, there will be a couple of giveaways. So we're having this workshop in the evening today, co-creation through digitalization. And we are having these workshops every day in the evening from five to eight. Well, except tomorrow. So there's six workshops, quality of mind, future fit. So what we're going to be doing after about 30 minutes, what we're going to be doing is, um, we'll send you a short form. Uh, so if you want to attend any of these workshops, like co-creation through digitalization, quality of mind, some very interesting topics sharpen your decision makings, and we need you to complete this short form. Uh, these are normally paid workshops, but we're giving away three uh, uh, passes to these workshops during this webinar. Um, and then towards the end of this session, you know, we'd like to invite some of you to become uh, panelists uh, uh, or speakers during our future events. So there's a short form for that, and we'll be sending that uh, your way on the chat. Um, so that's about it from me, uh, handing over to Mads uh, uh, to introduce himself in the session, and then uh, we can take it from there. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much, Varun, and I hope you can all hear me uh, and hopefully see my presentation. A little later, I will go to my uh, flip chart. That's my uh, favorite tool. And uh, before that, just a short introduction. First of all, Welcome so much, because uh, I heard some of the, the, the discussion before starting up here, and I speak a lot with people about probably the most interesting conflict or problem to solve today. How do we actually get coherence or working together or making a stronger value chain between sales and marketing? Uh, this is really interesting because uh, Normally, and I also heard this today, normally we see marketing as spending money and sales getting money in. And that is a huge problem in my opinion. I'll come back to that a little later because when I speak to marketing people, they are really tired of getting their budget cut. And when I speak to sales people, they sometimes need somebody else to take responsibility for getting in money because we always try to put the responsibility to sales and honestly, this is like, imagine that we will find a dinosaur walking in the streets of Dubai because it doesn't fit to the world of engaging with customers today. So what we actually need to do is we need to create that extremely coherence and we need to bring these two important uh, uh, departments together. And that's one of the main topics I'm gonna to speak about today because they've been too much divided. I'll show you some figures showing how expensive this uh, division between sales and marketing is and how much we can actually gain when we manage to bring them together. And a very short introduction to me before going into the topic. You are 
totally allowed during the session to ask questions anytime. Write it in the chat, bring it up, raise your hand, feel totally free to bring it on. A very short presentation of me. I work, uh, I started the company called Intense. Uh, I started it out together with my partners in Denmark, but also did here in the Middle East. And there's only one reason that we call ourselves Intense. That is because we see only way one to differentiate from all other competitors. That's not your product. That's even not your marketing. That's even not your, your way of developing services and products. That's the intensity in everything you do to win the market. Intensity mean, of course, building the best campaigns, working with the tools the best way, approaching the customers with intensity. Anything we need to show intensity because we all know engaging with a company, if they don't in engage you, if you don't show intensity, you just drop out and find somebody new. And then it ends all up in a price discussion. On the other hand, when you really feel intensity in everything we do, then you don't care that much about the price because you feel somebody's trying to solve your problem, engage with you, get your pains to go away and get your gains to come into the account. So that's why we call ourselves intense. And um, shortly about my background, working nearly 25 years now with sales development, and uh, I'm actually so lucky to be a part of that. that, that that's one of the funny things. Let's start here. If we look at sales and marketing, there's a very huge difference. If you go to look at universities around the world, there are several studies. There are several studies that look upon how we do better marketing. Marketing has been a part of universities since early 19s. You can educate in marketing. You can learn about branding, marketing, everything. But try to find a university degree in sales. That's very difficult because sales has always been something we think that people are born to or they have their talent and nothing can be more wrong because today, if you expect that you're just born to sales, it is a little like expecting you're born to be a baker or butcher or somebody, something else because sales has been very complicated today. That's why sales and marketing need to go together. I was a lucky part of starting up the first uh, really university uh, um, education in Denmark in sales, uh, strategic selling, because normally if you wanted to, to learn selling, you met a consultant like me for two days and then we expected people to change. But when you went to marketing, it was five years in university and then another degree and then a PhD and so on, but you couldn't study sales. And sale has, sales has become really complicated. So we need to bring this together. And as well, we also in a situation where marketing has been complicated because in old days, it was a little like marketing was the department of fun and jokes. So every time we went for a fair or we needed a campaign, we asked marketing, hey, can you bring up a campaign? And they went out and found something interesting, trying to get people to come. We still can do that, but today we need to use all the digital tools and we need to bring sales and marketing together to do that, because if we cannot do that, we are about to be out of business. And one of the things, there's a research showing that 60% of sales managers, 60% of sales managers, they see the digitizing of sales as the biggest challenge they are facing at the moment. How do we actually do that? And one of the things here is it calls for integration of sales and marketing. I'll show you that a little later. So by these words, welcome so much. I'm really happy because as I started saying about sales and marketing and the, the education and the science, I'm so lucky to be a part of a group of 60 sales scientists around the world. They supply me with a lot of science and research. And that makes me there so to be the messenger of a lot of these interesting uh, things they find out. And I'm really happy to do that because then it's no longer just a one day kickoff or one hour kickoff. But today, unfortunately, I only have one hour to inspire you on this extremely important topic. Before going to my flip chart, I'll just give you a couple of whys. Why are you here today? What you can expect is, I think for sure when you finish here, you'll get inspiration how to build a strong connection between sales and marketing. It's not done by today because if it was that easy, for sure, I would not be sitting here 
uh, I'll be uh, enjoying uh, something in the Caribbean because if I had that lucky medicine, that lucky medicament just to do it, I, uh, I would have been extremely rich. Uh, the other one you'll get today is ideas, how to, how to structure your digital or at least structure your sales and marketing. Because when I talk about digital, I think actually we have to maybe delete that word because it is obvious that we have to use these tools. We don't even need to speak about it anymore. Talking about digital marketing is as speaking about analog marketing and digital. It, this is something that has to go together, but there is an issue. Digital marketing has to be very, very, very close to sales because then we get the best possible solution for the company. And that's what I'm looking in for today. That is definitely how can we be I'll just put you in, put myself in the spotlight right now because I'm changing a little to the other webcam here. So in, in this webinar, what I actually will approach is that I'll approach some of the changes that has been uh, called in to bring sales and marketing closer together. I will address uh, definitely how we make, if you imagine that sales and marketing are two different departments. That was sometimes what we used to do. And very much when I speak to B2B companies, sometimes we only have uh, one or two persons in marketing, but maybe we have a field sales group of uh, 20 people. When you go to other companies, I see, I work with a very big uh, company at the moment in, in the Northern part of Europe. They have in their, in the central marketing, they have 80 marketing people that each of them has the product lines. So what they do is they just, flow over campaigns to the salespeople. So sometimes they're hit by eight different campaigns at the same time. Do you think that all these campaigns will succeed? No, they will not. Why? Because nothing is coordinated. So we need to bring this together and then we need to take a different approach. We need to understand, we speak a lot about the processes from an inside out perspective. How can we structure our process? How can we be efficient? How can we do this better and create better results? Maybe we should have an outside in perspective saying, how, how can we be relevant for the customers at the right time with the right message? That is three things, timing, relevance, and the right message at the right time when customers really are ready to, to, to speak to us. And then I don't care whether they speak to marketing or they speak to sales, because for me, it's one unit. And that's what we need to create, one unit understanding the responsibility. And that's why what I'm gonna speak about today takes it approach from the customer journey. And that journey, we just need to understand it has changed. Customer journey is an interesting word because that word comes from marketing in old days. Old days is just a couple of years ago. Marketing started talking about the journey has changed. I still approach a lot of sales departments. And when I ask them, can you tell me what a customer journey is? The room is right now at Zoom, or it's a room in the physical in the old days before the COVID. The room is silent when I ask people. People in sales, they don't really know what a customer journey is but marketing no, but they forgot to learn sales what a customer journey is. And the most important thing is this journey has changed. I'll start showing you a very simple customer journey and then I'll tell you how we can approach it by giving it a little more details because that's actually where we built the working together of sales and marketing. Very, very easy to understand is yes, that a customer journey needs to be seen as the first time the customer gets to know us, that's where the journey starts. And the last time they ever want to speak to us, that's where the journey ends. That means first time they approach us or we approach them, last time they speak to us and then after that, forget us. We keep on speaking to them even when they are buying and then buy no more and then they come back, we are still on a journey. It just changed a little. That's also some of the things we need to understand in sales and marketing. This journey, so to speak, never ends. It works with lead generation, it works with retention, it works with upselling, more selling, cross selling. And honestly, marketing needs to understand that are the challenges for sales. So first of all, we need to get a common language. Otherwise you create no coherency. 
between these uh, between these companies. But first of all, let's put them put them together and see them as not departments, but let's see sales and marketing as a function. Between sales and marketing, it's a function for the company because sometimes the receptionist start doing marketing by presenting herself in a decent way in the phone or physically. Sometimes the serviceman creates sales and marketing. So we need to stop saying sales as a department and marketing as a department. It's a function for the company that can bring us to a higher level. And we need to understand that. So anybody participate, but with different responsibilities. And that we'll have a look at. Here we start about talking about the journey to make it very, very simple. Normally what happens is when a customer has a need, they want to approach us. We can talk about different things here because we can approach them or they can approach us. When they have this need, they start gathering information. Information how to cover my need in the best possible way, balanced between benefit and, and, and expenses and like that. They are trying to get information, what should I do? And one thing they really want to do is they want to speak, if possible, to ambassadors or people that have tried to use our product or services. Because us human beings, some of you might participate, uh, I'm later on speaking about neuroscience, uh, sales and marketing. And that is actually interesting because the minute you have an ambassador, if, if somebody of your friends said, wow, well, use that product, then you think it's amazing. But if it's actually you don't use it, then you think it's bad. You don't know if it's right. It's only his or she's opinion, but it influences you. So this about revenues ambassadors are really, really important. These kind of trusted advisors or ambassadors. Then after having a need, gathering information, speaking to somebody who knows something, then you make your decision and you buy. Now you're a customer in a company. And then of course the journey keeps on with the retention because we want to speak to these clients more and more and more. Very often the first journey is very expensive for a company uh, because it made it, the first order normally never give any profit. And salespeople normally don't understand that because they don't see how much, much money we spent to get the client in the company, to get the lead. That's one of the first things you need to know. What is the cost of having a lead? What is the, what is the first order average? And what is the lifetime cycle of profit with one client? If you know these figures, and some of you will participate maybe in sales enablement, you'll know that these figures, that, that is your, your the figures that you have to know. And sales need to know them, marketing need to know them. And unfortunately, this is not common language between them. So this one changed because it changed the way that in old days, and we're just talking about a few years ago, when one of our clients had a need, they called us and then the salesman participated in the whole journey. The whole journey, he was a part of this, speaking to the client, giving him information, presenting somebody he could speak to. Unfortunately, never the bad, the bad references, always the good one. And then he tried to get him to make a decision. Sometimes marketing approached even existing clients or new clients, and they started telling them, you have a need. But it was very, very, very generic, meaning that they put in a, 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 a sorry, put one uh, in uh, ads on web pages, ads in papers, uh, roll-ups in fairs. And, and then we hope that somebody would say, yeah, I better speak to them. Sometimes our sales people actually approach the client before they had the need to introduce, here's a new product, you would probably have a need. So what started here was very, very normal. That happened is that this journey was very much in the hand of the salesman and marketing took a role here and then sales traveled together with the client. During this session, marketing of course provided sales with presentation, PowerPoints, uh, catalogs and whatever. The problem with that marketing very often made a lot of tools, but honestly, I trained so many salespeople that never used these tools because they just got them for marketing. And sometimes it was too like unfriendly tribes uh, marketing very uh, scientists, very uh, theoretically doing uh, things that never took a hand out of sales practical world. Sales very often of offended by marketing, taking distance saying, yeah, you don't know the real world. 
you see they're in the same company. How do we bring them together to work? So what changed here dramatically is that today, I come back to this figure a little later as well. Today, I could ask you a question. When do you think that they want the client, the customer wants to speak to a salesman? They want to speak to a salesman after being traveling nearly 60% of the journey themselves. That doesn't mean they're traveling alone, but that means what we see today is in B2B selling, B2B selling, the customer want to be approached by the salesman after in average 57% of the journey has been done. This is totally different for salespeople because if you're trying to approach them here and then you come to this point, what has happened during this journey here? They haven't been sitting alone in the office doing nothing. No, they have been Googling, they have been searching, then have been watching videos, they have been watching ads, papers, reviews, whatever. So when the salesman meet them, at one end, they are much better armed as buyers because they know more than the salesman. On the other hand, if we haven't been part of the journey here with sales and marketing, online, digital, then we'll probably never get the chance here because we're not in the game. This is actually one of the most important things to understand that this has changed totally. So what we have to see is no longer here is marketing and here is sales. No, this here is sales and marketing. That's also why a lot of companies today are changing the name to S marketing or even better. What I like, they change it to CX, talking about CX, that is the department with different responsibility, CX for customer experience. Because the experience for the customer comes from here to here to here to here to there. That's why we need to be a little more detailed in a minute about this. So we actually uh, in a situation where this journey has changed and it is not changed by marketing and sales. It's changed because uh, the invention created the internet, the digitalization and everything. So what we have to do now is we have to understand that here is an approach we need to take. And now we need to understand as well that marketing and sales need to understand that working with clients, that is a little like what is called an infinity loop. It is a business that go on and go on and go on and go on. Very often we talk about marketing as those getting people to speak with us, sales wanted getting them to buy from us. I see it totally different because first of all, we need to understand the journey, the touch point, and then we can find out who is actually the best person, not necessarily in person, who is the best person to have responsibility for the touch point. But it all starts in some areas. It all starts here. It starts with somebody who is out of the market, meaning that they are not at the moment buying from us. That's where the journey starts. The journey starts here. And what we want to do is, we're talking about here, getting new customers, new customers for our business. Here we have the existing customers that we want to maintain in our company. We have here people here out of our business. We don't have them. So what we want to do is we want to trigger them. I'll show you a little later. What does trick? What is a trigger? A trigger could definitely be an ad on Facebook saying, do you actually know that when you do like this, you save like so and so. It could be an ad in a paper. The problem with an ad in the paper is you cannot click on it. That means there's no links. Then you need to put on an, an, a text message or a short code that they can send something and get something back. Because in old days, marketing was pushing some messages out. Today, we want to push out and get clients to interact with us. So here we are building the triggers. And honestly, now I speak to marketing. You start here at the triggers, but who knows what will trigger a client? Who knows it better than sales? That means already here, you need to integrate sales and defining triggers because 
they know exactly if you buy, let's say you buy big lorries uh, and you buy, uh, I have a, a client here, a customer here uh, that sells uh, tires for big lorries. The, the big problem for lorries with tires are not only the price of, of, of tires, that is the time when they're down or the break breakdown time to wait for a new uh, tire. That means if you could trigger them and say, buy tires from us, your lorry will, lorry will always be driving, you earn money. That means you have the pain because the pain for them is one or two days standing still, they don't earn money. So marketing and sales must work together to get the triggers because then they start what is called the awareness. And still, there's no reason for a salesperson to call them because if I go back to this one, they are still in early stage. And now we, now we touch one of the other problems here. Remember this figure, 73%. 73% of salespeople's activities towards clients are out of timing with where the client is in the journey. That means they contact them here, that's too early. It's very difficult to send anybody to somebody who doesn't, doesn't see the need. Or they contact them here or even here, and then it's too late. So if we together, sales and marketing, can work with timing, then we don't waste 73% of the activities. That's how it is today in average in B2B. 73% is wasted because if you contact somebody here who is not triggered, they are not hot. They're not a hot lead. They are very cold lead. Then here they travel in awareness. In this awareness phase, they start communicating with our company, not with the sales guy, but with sales and marketing as a function. They participate in a webinar like here. They download a white paper. They go to see something on our web page. They maybe uh, participate in taking down one of our videos. So what's happening here is marketing is doing sales because they communicate with the client. And all the time they gather this information in systems like HubSpot, Active Campaign, whatever it is, they get information because they track, they track whatever that client is doing, they track the behavior. And then when it's time, and I don't know when it's time, when it's time to get contacted by a salesman, the client is contacted. And the contact is not necessarily taking your car, driving out to LN to meet him. It could be sending him a LinkedIn message. It could be sending him an email. It could be having a meeting on Zoom or Teams. It could be having a, a short chat on a chat. There are so many ways because here we transform from awareness into the client goes into a phase of active evaluation. He wants to speak to us, that's now. And if we're not ready here, then we're back, then we're out of business because now we start here. So what actually interesting is here, in the companies together, sales and marketing define these touch points. What is the journey when somebody wants to speak with us? How do we get them all the way from being out of market, all the way to being hot leads, all the way to be ready to buy. And it doesn't end here. But this, they have to work together. First of all, marketing need to know from sales, what is your dream customer? They need to understand what are we looking for in sales? They need to understand what is the gain and the pain for the client and the customer. And sales need to understand what are the activities you do because then we can support them. And honestly, a lot of times I've seen sales and marketing and managers, they are fighting for the budget. They are fighting. They don't understand each other. It's like two tribes, as I said before. Bring them together because it's no longer two tribes, it's one function. Try to imagine that your kidney and your liver is conflicting in your body. How will your body be? So we need to bring them together to understand. We need to make the most amazing customer journeys because what I can tell you is that that the customer, he expect our digital presence. He expect us to be here because he doesn't want to speak with a salesman too early because he knows the minute a salesman comes to my office, take my time, he's also going for my money. 
So one paradigm we need to change here is we need to change from we are not selling. We want to learn the customer to buy. I can ask you, if you go into a shop in Dubai Mall, do you want to be sold to or do you want to buy? And when you come home and you bought something you shouldn't buy, go, are you then going home and saying, somebody sold me or are you saying, I bought it? So we need to, in our mindset, we need to change from selling to getting customers to buy, making an experience. That's why the CX, as I said before, is a totally paradigm change. It's a customer experience in all these touch points. And if a salesman speaks too early to the client, he brings him back here and more triggers, more awareness, and then they will get ready to buy. Then when they buy, he starts in new phases because what is one of the major things is that when they buy this product, right now I'm training a company that sells big machines and the minute, the minute they buy, they can say, see you later alligator, maybe no more to the salesman because the salesman as it is today, he goes back getting new leads. He loses his interest for the client. And here again, sales and marketing need to work together because now we need to onboard the client to show the right experience of being a client. That means we go into a phases here where we actually create all the touch points to be a very satisfied customer that goes to the web page and tell everybody, please buy this product. It's an amazing product. So what we're actually into here is we need to make it easy because we can no longer control the communication from clients. Try to imagine that you buy something and it's really, really bad. How many people do you think could, could get the idea of writing on Facebook, put something on Reddit or whatever? You know it. That's why we need to make them so satisfied here because the minute they are that, they will support marketing. They will support more selling, upselling, cross-selling because that's what's happening here. And most companies have no idea how they want to do all this cross and upselling and retention because for them, also for marketing, the journey ends here. Marketing take the journey here, bring in leads, then it's sales. And then who takes this after sales? I know sometimes we talk about an after sales department or division, but are they integrated with the, with the marketing? I work right now with the biggest pump supply in the world. And what we see is that is the handover is the problem. Marketing do something, sales do something, then they sell, then the technicians and the service should come. There's no coherency between these departments. And who is actually the, the one offering for that? That is the client or the customer. That means customer experience goes down. So then after onboarding them, then we need to create loyalty. And again, what we do here is we invite them to participate in webinars. We learn them how to use our product. We give them more information experience. If you have bought this product, then buying this product is amazing. That's a way to learn them how to use. So what we do is here, we learn them how to buy and here we learn them how to use. And this is still a job for sales and marketing together. In a lot of companies, what we see is that when people have bought, then 12 months later, nobody talked to them. This is totally a waste of money. So what we need to do is we need to take this infinity loop because when they get loyal here, next time they have to buy our product, our services, or the other products we have, they shouldn't turn out in the market again. They should turn around here and then drive around here and drive around here and drive around here. These things are our main challenge. We need to make this, and if, you, if we took this infinity loop and then we just put it like that, boom. Starting here, triggers, awareness, then we put it up on the relation, buying, that's a main point, onboarding, loyalty, and then hopefully keep on, keep on, keep on forever. The infinity loop, of course, comes from the forever thought that they will always buy and buy and buy again. Then we can start doing two things, customer journey, sales, and marketing process.
That means here is the journey. We need to know coming from this trigger, awareness, active evaluation, buying, onboarding, here the, the loyalty building, retention part, what are actually the touch point where clients want to meet us? And here we could start because try to imagine that sales and marketing went out, spoke to some clients, not about the satisfaction of the products. We even speak to some leads and then ask them, what do you do when you want to buy a product like ours? And I could ask you, if you want to buy a new computer for yourself, how many of us, I know some of us is pretty old, some of us will go to a store. That's a little old school, right? Most people will go to the computer and then they will Google and they will look at Amazon. They will look at e-electricity cities. They will look at everything here. But we need to know because when we know how the journey is, we know the most important touch point. I'm just putting up some touch points here. We know the most important touch point. And what we can do now is, now we can tailor our sales process. Here, doom, 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 doom. And when we tailor the sales process, then we can say, okay, this touch point, this touch point, this touch point, and this, and so on. What are the most important touch point? And what should the customer experience? Who is responsible? What does sales do? What do marketing do? What do service do? And how do we actually create that team? because sales is no longer a one man's game. It is a team game. That means we are together. So that means when we are good in sales, we are good together. When we are bad, we are bad in sales because sales is, as I said, it's a function. So we need to understand that. And that means when I ask here sales managers, even marketing managers, and I ask them, do you know the journey for the customer? Most of them say, yeah, I think we do. And I think you shouldn't think, you should know this. And secondly, one thing that is very important, I hear often sales managers, they don't talk about the journey. They start talking about the sales process. They tell us, first of all, we get a lead. Then we contact the lead. Then we go for a meeting. Then we present, a, oh, stop. You're already talking about your own situation not about the journey. What is it they want to know at different stages? What is the, the message they should have? What is the experience they should have? And the minute you can align this, then what will happen is you approach them and you go to the next one, you go to the next one, you go to the next one. It is like a domino and then boom, 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 it falls down. But this takes some work, work to do and who is the best to do it? Sales and marketing together and maybe even speaking to clients. So what we speak about here is that we need to structure. We could actually divide this into three main responsibilities and don't care so much about the size here. It goes down and get more and more narrow. And then we have in the top, the wide one here. If we look at this one, here we actually have the really, really huge problem. I'll just draw this red line. And then I will bring it on later because I'll take away the red line later. Normally what we see is here, somebody creates something up here. That is what is called content. Content creation means making an ad, making a, a material for fair. Uh, make, even I can ask you one question. I, I, I wanna cut that away, but participating in conferences and fairs. Try to imagine how much money spent how much hours spent. I think that's one of the benefits we will get from the COVID-19 because in the future, we will see that there will be few fairs, few markets, few conferences. We will see much more like what we're doing now, web summits, because it's easier, it's more approachable. It's much more easy to do. But here in the beginning of what is called top of funnel, because this is a sales and marketing funnel. Here, the clients come down, and fall down and fall down and here they get to be a customer. In the top, we need to do some content. Content can be white papers, it can be uh, ads, it can be something on the web page. And then it goes down to, to, to what is actually more connecting here because then they participate in webinars. What we are doing now is 
we are lead generating. Lead generating and problem again is, if I call a client that is only on this stage, it's too early. Now we go down to webinars. We go down to maybe the first approach, speaking to them on LinkedIn. We do the first approach now following up after they participated in the LinkedIn seminar or the webinar. Here is a line between this one and this one. In old days, marketing took this one. Then they also took it down to some webinars. And then we had here the gray zone who actually followed up, who actually contacted them, who actually took the lead follow up. Because when it comes from this follow up, it goes down to being hot leads. They're extremely cold, getting warmed up. Now they get hot. After this, you get virtual meetings, physical meetings, and then you present proposal and then you get customers. This is a very simple way. Of course, I know your activities are different. The reason I put this up is in old days, here was the line and it was nearly just like a border between somebody don't like that do not like each other very much. You see the line here, marketing took care of mainly this, creating ads, campaigns, materials. Here in the middle, somebody did something maybe a little together and down here, meetings, cold canvas, even contacting. What we see is, now it's interesting, again, one of the figures you need to remember. 15%. That figure, 15%, that is the average percentage of hot leads from marketing to sales that are being followed up. They're changing at the moment. The problem was, that marketing delivered some leads on an Excel sheet or in a HubSpot system or something else. And then these leads were presented for the sales people, but they just followed up like they wanted to do. And if they look at that list, they said, oh, this guy, he has never bought anything out with him. Oh, this guy, no reason to speak with him, get him away. This one, oh, I already been there. Oh, this one is a good one. And then they want to go to the old customers to have already. So here we did a lot of effort here and try to ask your marketing department how much money they spent on participating in all these conferences, fairs, and all these uh, amazing facilities, ads, papers, everything. And now they're down here because now sales take over. So what we talk about here is, we talk about what is called marketing qualified and sales qualified leads. And here comes the responsibility because the responsibility for marketing goes somewhere down here and then somewhere here. I don't know exactly where sales take over because now they get sales qualified. Up here, they are marketing qualified. We want to do more marketing. And if a sales guy speak to somebody after a webinar and he can imagine this guy is not ready to buy, not selling to him, he's not ready to buy because he hasn't traveled long enough. He's only here. Then he, he doesn't go for a meeting. He goes directly back into the funnel and he's being warmed more up. It's like if you put a chicken in the, in the boiler and it's not really hot enough, you put it back after you tasted it. That's the same with the leads. You have to bring them back. But what is happening too often is that salespeople, they are booking these meetings because they are measured by meetings, not quality meetings, but quantity meetings. So what you're actually doing as a sales manager, you're killing the whole funnel because if I'm measured by meetings, I'll give you meetings. But instead of a lot of meetings, we need to lower activity level, but raise quality level. I can tell you in the end, what you get is easy access to clients participating all the way down. Secondly, you will have an average order going extremely higher than today. Because today, a lot of selling is that you have a lot of meeting and you spend a lot of time to get just one customer. And when you sell to them, you don't sell big, you sell. Today, we need to make them buy big. Buy big because they really are heated up and ready to buy. And one of the reasons that this really 
crushes here. We see that sometimes you have to, to get like 50 leads to get one or two or three clients within a short time. And this is, of course, one of the things that you totally need to know. Here is when we talk about KPIs for, for marketing, a KPI is how many good quality leads do we deliver to sales? And for sales, it is how many of these leads do we follow up, get meetings, present proposals, and finalize at customers. And then we can speak together. Instead of saying, you bring us bad leads, we speak about what kind of leads do you want? Well, how can we help you, sales? And sales say, how can we help you to get give us better leads? But this is the mindset of communication between these two departments. And once again, they're no longer department. It's a function. It's a CX function. And then another thing is, one of the reasons that this is so important, I put up some figures sometimes here. 15%, maybe you remember, this is the number that are followed up by sales, the average number that is followed up, warm leads followed up. I put up 73% because the problem is here, 73%, because that is the number of activities for salespeople that is out of scope with the customer's journey. 57% is the journey that the client does himself before he wants to connect, interact with a salesman, but he doesn't do it alone if we are online with the most amazing online sales and marketing tools. And then the last number you need to remember is, and I'll put it up here because this one helps us, 6.8. 6.8. Is the average number of people involved in a B2B decision. That means if you're selling an IT system or you're selling something else, even that you're selling an agreement for leasing, the average number of people involved in making decisions is 6.8 percent. That means sometimes you think you speak to the decision maker in finance but he or she might speak to marketing, he might speak to HR, he might speak to research and development, he might speak to somebody in purchasing. So 6.8, and that means no salesman has any chance to influence 6.8 person, unless sales and marketing work together. Because in this period, we make our communication from sales and marketing so we can target the decision maker, the influencer, the critical, we can actually tailor directly down to this. So what we need to hear is to see this journey is one long way of influencing the right people with the right message. That's another thing. Sometimes we see that marketing find an amazing message. Yes, that message is amazing if you are an R&D or you're the CEO, but it's terrible if you're an HR or if you're in a CFO position. And maybe we need to find out who are the influencers, who are decision makers, who are the one that stops this. And that's why 7.8 actually going up and just a couple of years ago, it was 5.4 to go still up. That means, of course, there's a difference here between what kind of product and what kind of business. But this is really, really important to understand. This is where we do a difference. Understanding that sales and marketing is one muscles. It's one muscle. Try to imagine that my hands were going to the gym and one of them want to do push-ups, another one to do grab-ups. That, that, that will never work. That means we have to make it balanced and they work together coordinated. And you can see it very much like sales and marketing are two hands that should coordinate together. So what I'll just show you now is, I see we have in the chat. Uh, so somebody is asking a question here. Uh, would you comment in relation to sales and marketing also apply to business development? Is it safe to say that business development is synonymous with say? Oh yeah, uh, I think we, I, th I, I like the, I really like, uh, now get a little complicated because I think you will learn more even when you participate in some of the other webinars. I'll go shortly into this. I could see in my opinion that we have the sales guy or the sales rep is closing the business. And then maybe business development is part of bringing more business, depending on how you define business development. Because in a lot of companies, I've seen business development uh, and, and sales, I'll talk again about this big 
pump company, business development and sales are really far from each other. So I think again, maybe business development will take part here and really start to understand the client uh, position very well. But what we're talking about here is what I come to now. Uh, you have a lot of names in your company, sales, marketing, uh, sales rep, uh, senior sales rep, managers, business development, you have uh, technicians, you have the uh, service managers. Please forget all these titles. Find out the functions of them. Who does, who has the responsibility? Because just one connection that is missing here is a problem. So for me, business development is a natural that they should do this. Key account managers, whatever. They are part of the function called sales. And often business development sometimes is uh, in another department. But please, they are participating as the receptionist, as the coordinator, as anybody. But let's go back to this. I'll just share a small presentation. I see there was one more. Uh, I'll just share one more information for you before going into to this one. Just one second. Here I share this. I hope you see my screen now. Uh, this is the customer journey. That is what you really need to understand and define. And then we talk into the next step here. The next step is of course, that we need to understand how do we actually integrate this in the company. Here we back to what it actually started. What we see is here, this is all about, and I know it, getting results. But please, before just talking about results as profit, I have to tell you, just talking about profit is rather short term or really old school. Of course, we should maximize a profit, but there are more KPIs. We talk about profit, we talk about market share, we talk about winning the right customers, meaning that we might change from one group of customers to another one. So we have a lot of things here that are the results we want to approach or reach. Then to do this, there's only one way to understand that is to create amazing customer experiences amazing customer experiences and they really call for a coherency between these three things that i have here and these three things are our strategy strategy is segmentation uh, priorities markets we want to go for distribution channels digitalization Strategy is very often something we do on paper. Secondly, after doing this, I just showed you some of the figures you can use. Then you need to look at your structure and your process. What we talk about here is how did we actually build up the journey, what they want to see, how did we actually organize our organization, and are we actually running it the right way? I see in a lot of companies when they bring in a new strategy, that means they change strategy. They totally forget if you change a strategy without changing structure and process, then you have no possibility of winning that strategy. It is like a football coach saying, we want to play attacking, but he keeps on defending with five people. He needs to change the, the change and the process. And then when it really hits reality, because this is paperwork, this is desktop work, a lot of what I showed you here is still doing desktop work, defining the funnel, defining the journey, defining the touch points. That's done here. It's all desktop work. Where it really hits reality, it's where it hit culture. Culture is not only uh, it's not only going to the opera in Dubai. Culture here is what people in the company think, feel, and how they act. And that means we have to find out. Thinking, feeling, action. Do we feel that we are one unit, sales and marketing? Do we understand each other? Do we speak the same language? Are we like Venus and Mars? Are we from each other's planet? Or do we actually speak together? When I do a job here as a sales guy, I can tell it from, from my own company here. Yeah. I do something here as a sales guy. I give back to my colleague who's responsible for marketing. The effort here, I give him feedback all the time. When I call somebody who wants to speak to me, I tell him what they said so we can adjust. But we have to work together. So we have to spend time together to do this. This is where it actually ends. 
because what I see is we want to change the strategy. Sometimes we want to change the structure, but we don't change the culture. We still keep on working like we did in old days. And honestly, guys and girls, you will never succeed. This is a culture change. We need to, I've seen so many people in the company say, oh, that's sales. You can never trust them. Wow, you're talking about your sales department? And then they talk about marketing or somebody else. Oh, this is marketing. They're so boring out of understanding anything. Is that how we speak about each other? Is that how, if that is the culture in your company, you have a big problem and maybe even a bigger problem than your buying process and selling process. So here we talk about mindset, team, understanding. And if you start here, we all know to build this, that's where you build the strong brand. The strong brand you build when everybody supports each other, understand each other, and that's how you bring sales and marketing together. And now I go to the flip, sorry, to the presentation again. I hope you see my slide because you need to define how is our culture today and what kind of culture is it we want? Because that is the way that you can really do a change. You have to change the way people think, feel and act in your company. That will be the, the main blockade, the main objection handling that you cannot change to the next level. So just to show this, I'll move on here. I'll go over this one because we know. These are the numbers you should know. 6.8 person are involved in a decision process in a B2B business sales. 53% of customer B2B customers is their loyalty is driven by the sales experience. And the sales experience is not only responsible by the sales department. Only 50% of the leads coming from marketing are followed up by salespeople. That's terrible. You're wasting 85% of your, your uh, marketing effort. 73% of sales time is spent on customers not ready for you. Waste of sales time. And customers has completed like 57% of the buying circle before they are engaging with sales. That means this is really interesting. Uh, these figures we should know and be more interested and more curious about. And what I'll show you now is here are four guidelines. You need to understand speed is essence. That means, and here we also conflict. Normally marketing spend month to prepare a campaign. Today, making a campaign is very easy because it's done digital, social media, and make it small because then it will work. Speed is essence and 80% is good enough to go. Don't look for the, for the brilliant, look for the pace because then you can adjust. That's why we need to start with small things, seed works that creates a better culture. And then if your company's top management doesn't understand how sales and marketing is one unit and how digital sales and marketing is the most important thing in your company, then you need to call for top management to understand it. I was so lucky to work with some boards uh, the last couple of weeks because a lot of board members, sorry to say, they're normally not young, so they don't understand how social media is a part of B2B strategy, how you use LinkedIn to get leads, how you do ads on LinkedIn, how you follow them up, how they're put into the funnel. Top management and board members need to understand that this is the top agenda for a company that wants to sell, that is understanding digital sales and marketing. And that calls for a new mindset. A new mindset, I just showed you the culture. You need to change that culture by bringing sales and marketing together. I've seen a a lot of companies where there's no longer a sales director, there's no longer a marketing director, there's a CX director. A CXO, customer experience operating chief officer. He is the officer for, say, for customer experience. And that is a change because then he might have a marketing manager. He might have a marketing for digital marketing manager. He might have a sales manager for pre-sales because pre-sales is very often not somebody who drives out there by the phone. This really calls for restructuring your whole way of selling. And that calls for a new mindset that we work together, we are one function, we are no longer different units. And then we have to see sales and marketing is not about selling, it's not about marketing, it is about customer experience in all touch point. And that is maybe the most important thing to understand. We should change from selling 
to make customers buy and love us. And by this, I want to thank you. If you have any questions on the, in the end here, feel free to ask them. Otherwise, I would really say thank you so much for participating. If you want to hear more about this, I have a couple of more sessions about sales enablement. That is a very important part. And also about this neuroscience, what happened actually in the brain when we are selling that is very known in marketing, but very often very forgotten in sales. So by this, I will end here and say thank you so much. Any questions, feel free to ask. Otherwise, I'll close the session now. Thank you. Um, hi, everyone. Before you drop off, I just want to say that uh, Mads is doing another workshop today at uh, 5 p.m. I forgot that you, of course, will get pictures of my slides and my my uh, PowerPoint presentation. Uh, Kanika, you will take care of that. Yes, yes. Yeah, and um, I just wanted also to share that uh, Mads is doing a workshop at 5 p.m. today with uh, two sales scientists. Um, and it's going to be uh, far from 5 to 8, a very detailed workshop on uh, co-creation through digitalization. So um, I'll drop the link in the chat right now. So if um, any of you would like, uh, please, please feel free to join. I couldn't, I couldn't stop seeing that uh, Rishak is asking a question. What is the best way to start implementing company culture? Uh, first of all, it is uh, to start speaking together. Uh, sit down and uh, draw some of these drawings, uh, speak together about some of the topics, point out your direction and bring people together. The only way to bring culture, we know it from the old days, uh, around the campfire, there was the old man in the village, there was the young man, and they talked about everything. That is the same here. If you want to change cult company culture, bring people together, not to speak about themselves, to, but to speak about the customer and the company. Uh, and every time they are together, don't let them speak about themselves. But this is actually a very interesting workshop itself uh, to do that. So I hope... Uh, uh, wish, wish I, I, you got a little point of how to start. Bring them together and speak. That's also how we create culture in our family. So thank you so much to all of you. Kanika, I will uh, I will leave now, and I hope that's okay. Yeah. Um, one last thing, you know, if you can quickly take a picture, if uh, everyone can on their video, uh, maybe we can take a quick picture. Uh, yes, I see Ghassan has on, switched on his video, Muhammad. Awesome. Two more seconds and uh, let's all say cheese. Great. So I'm going to click now. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for joining today and see you at five uh, for a very, very interesting thank you very much. workshop. Thank you. Bye.